Hi everyone. This is a test of the GTL uh, gate uh, switch that I'm testing. And what I'm doing now is just sending a straight DC, not pulsed, in the 0.4 ohm uh, coil here. So only straight to the low uh, voltage coil. And uh, seeing how much uh, force we can alleviate from these permanent magnets that are embedded in here to remove the flux, the pull force. So we have about 2.6 uh, kilograms of pull force and when I throw the switch on uh, now we alleviate uh, some of that pull force. So we've alleviated uh, pretty well uh, just a little over 2 kilograms uh, of pull force and if I press the scale there that's uh, accurate constant reading there. So right about 0.555 is what is uh, residual of pull force and this is what it's uh, utilizing as far as voltage 2.22 volts at uh, uh, 4.29 uh, or 4.3 um, amps so basically uh, 4.5 watts it needs to do this so the next test is basically I'm going to just shut that off and now our scale goes back down to 2.6 again and I just this is live this is a lock position when the red light comes on and I keep it on live so as you see as soon as I touch it here it, uh, it changes and then it tries when it senses a change it, it, it locks so now I take it off of lock and there you go so now all I'm going to do is connect the um, the pulse circuit and the uh, flyback diode to uh, go across to the high voltage coil and what is interesting in this configuration I have them in series and this means that I have actually uh, 93 ohms between this and this coil so we actually have 93 ohms resistance and the pulse circuit is set to a frequency and this power supply now will be providing the power to it and uh, high voltage because it's a pulse and uh, but the power input what is interesting is actually just a little less to do the same work so there we are at 2.6 kilograms and I started up by powering the uh, this power supply at 60 volts at 153 uh, milliamps and there we are our scale is I'll put it on live there our scale is pretty well exactly at the same, uh, or actually at 545. So that is the same amount of work alleviated for actually uh, less power than going straight DC into the low voltage coil. And I find that interesting. So there you go, 60 volts at 155 milliamps is 9.3 watts. But keep in mind, again, we've got 93 ohms of DC resistance here. So there really is something interesting happening. And this shouldn't be, we shouldn't be able to get that extra amount of work uh, with all that DC resistance. We've got a lot of power being wasted in there. But, um, you know, I really can't prove that I'm uh, beneficial uh, very much. I mean, it's not a huge difference. There is a bit small benefit. But it's just, just interesting because of all that DC resistance and we're getting, you know, a great uh, thing here happening. I'm going to shut it off and you'll see the scale going back to uh, 2.6 uh, kilograms. Put it back on live there and start it up again. Just to give you one more seeing of what, what it's doing. So there you go. And uh, just put it back on live. So that's it. That's obviously showing you that it's doing the same thing as what the straight DC is doing for a little less power, but <laughs> under huge resistive conditions. Because in the way I've got it configured now, it's actually this inductor is in series with that one, and the flyback is shorted across the two, basically, every time the pulse is shutting back off and creating this strong magnetic field and there you go, doing the same amount of work. So, thought that was interesting, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye now.